Good morning, everybody. Jody Brozick here with WinterWarriorsLive.com. This morning, I'm joined by head coach Dan Eaker. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Jody. Thanks for having me again. It's always my pleasure. Thank you for having us. It's been two weeks since homecoming and a decisive 60-6 to victory over the Chamberlain Cubs. It's been a long time ago, but your thoughts? Was it a better performance than you'd hoped for your team? We played well, um, but I wouldn't say it's better than we'd hoped. I mean, we, we expect to play pretty well, you know, and uh, I, I, you know, I thought we executed well. I, I think our kids were upset, disappointed that uh, the zero's off the board, and, and maybe it's something that's not over our head anymore. And, you know, it, it's not a, a big deal. We've, we've said that throughout the year, that that's not uh, an underlying goal for this team is to shut out every team. Um, and, you know, I, I think I mentioned to a few people after the game that, we talked as a team, and we decided we're still going to finish the year, even though we gave up six points. So, you know, but we played well. And uh, I thought the counter blow to the kick return with us coming back with a kick return really kind of took any uh, wind out of the sails. You know, Chamberlain's excited to play us. And and, and, uh, and we mentioned before in the pregame last, uh, when we played them, uh, kind of a team on the rise. And, and uh, that was a big momentum boost for them. I mean, in their minds, they're like, we're going to play with them. And, I, I just thought maybe that the counter punch back with the kick return and then a nice stop and and then a score right after that kind of took sales out of it and we just really kind of kept playing it very well and um, you know, I think one thing that's I've been probably one of the happiest um, is our uh, amount of penalty yards has been very minimal and and I, we played a pretty clean game again there we had three interceptions defensively again Cameron it, it's hard. It, any football player is pretty lucky to get an interception return and a kick return and a running in one game, let alone do a two two back game. So uh, pretty impressive performances by him out of two games. But, uh, you know, we played where we expected to play. And, uh, you know, going in, um, we knew that uh, we just felt that we were a better football team and that's what we wanted to go out and prove it. And plus, you had the facts from coming with alumni back. We wanted to. You know, we wanted to show our, our crowd and an alumni that hadn't seen us yet uh, what kind of football team we, we were, and I, I think we did that. So i very happy the way we, the way we played. How did your team and you spend your, you and your team spend the bye week? Yeah, bye weeks are, you know, they're good and bad. If you, I think if you're kind of dinged up, which we weren't, weren't necessarily, you know, we weren't dinged up, I guess, and, and sometimes it's good to have that extra rest. Sometimes it's good to get a little break from, from football, so... What we really did is you know, we, we started working a little bit on Parkson, but we kind of got back to what well, we did some stuff in two days, a lot more breakdown, a lot more individual time, and you know just kind of work on fundamentals, but probably more importantly remind all our guys what's got them here so far. You know, all that stuff of playing your position right you know, ties into all 11 guys doing their position right at one time. And, so it was. We, we did a lot more breakdown, um, a lot more fundamental stuff, and, and then started working on a little bit of Parkson. We didn't really talk Parkson. We just what we did in team time was was Parkson stuff, and um, and then gave him an extended weekend. We gave him three days off, and um, then we came back on Monday and treated like a regular game week where we're working with full tilt. I, you know, it gives us a little, it gave us a little extra time. I think to to look at film and get ready for Parkson. Um, which is always nice, and um, that's kind of how we tr we treated it last year too. Last year was, I think, the first time in a long time that we had a bye week during the regular season. So I was hit beginning of the year or end of the year, which I would probably prefer. But uh, um, I think we handled the best we could and the way we should. So, um, and I think last year's experience helped with that. Winter Warriors versus Parkston Trojans, owners of the last two 11B championships. Are they becoming your best new rival? Uh, I would say right up there. You know, they're um, they've been very successful over the last five years. Um, they're the last team that beat us in the regular season uh, on our homecoming night two years ago. Uh, we've had some interesting matchups. See, is you know when you, you say that rival, you think it, you know those games have been pretty close. But when we look at when we started playing them again, I think five years ago, five or six. There's only been one close game, and that was the the two, two day. day. Yeah, the two day. <laughs> um, and I think they would have probably been considered the favorite that game. I think maybe playing two days helped us. Uh, they couldn't wear us out in a full game. 
we were able to go home and rest. And even if we, you know, that was an extra four and a half hours driving when you think of it that way. Um, but you know, that was a, that was a good battle. And then they got us pretty good two years ago. And then last year we, we got it twice. So the games haven't been what you consider a true rival going down the last play stuff, but, um, two programs that have been in the top, you know, three, four, five teams without question over the last five years. So that adds a little flavor to it. Um, you know, when we, they were, we're still in a conference, but we don't really have a conference schedule, but that's kind of the pride game of who's best in the SESD, which, you know, we take to heart. And then, you know, they've been just like us. They're through a really good run of athletes. If you look at the success of the wrestling program, almost all those guys play football. They put a lot of we got they got two kids playing in Iowa right now, so I mean that says something about some of the kids they put up. So yeah, I, I would agree with you. I, I think our kids get excited for this game. I know coaches we get excited for this game because, you know, he he always wanted as a coach try to get redemption of teams that have maybe got you. And as I said before, they're the last ones that got us in the regular season. So um I think that does have that flair. And that and you go back to the bye week, it's if you can pick a week to have two weeks get ready for a team. On our schedule, I'd say this is the one. It gives us a little extra time to prepare for them. So. Ideal. Taking a look at Parkston, do you expect any new wrinkles <clears throat> out of the Trojans, or is this game simply a matter of familiarity and whoever comes out and performs the best is going to win? Yeah, I would say that. I, you know, Coach, Coach Norton's back, Coach him again this year, and he, he didn't coach him last year, but he's probably similar to me. Where he doesn't do a lot of different things. Um, I think he kind of believes if we do, we're going to, you know, stick with what we do and try to be good at what we do rather than trying to change everything up. You never know um, defensively what adjustments they can make, but I'd, I'd be kind of surprised to see them come out of anything offensively that they haven't been running for six games. And then they got six games, and it's hard at any it, – it's really hard to go change your offense at the stage of the game. They maybe have a few things that they could throw at us, but they're going to – they're a run-first team. They come out of the wishbone and – and they have good athletes. They have really good skill skill guys. They really do. And, and uh, uh, the Beats brothers and Semler and McKean and uh, Holzbauer, and, uh, they got good athletes. And uh, um, they want to come at you. They'll they'll take shots with McKean. He's part of their, their big, tall, strong, physical athlete at wide receiver. Uh, they'll play action and, and hit uh, Leishner on, on tight ends and run running backs out. But, you know, uh, I, I don't see any major surprises. Uh, if there is, we'll obviously have to adjust, but we've prepared what we can. Um, every team has tendencies and every team has go-to things. And, and, and every week, you know, we look at it as a staff, there's three or four plays that the other teams do that we have to stop. Just like other teams know there's three or four plays that they better stop us, otherwise we're going to keep running it all night. So it, the game plan doesn't change uh, for that. Defensively, you know, I'd go back to last year. They, you know, they threw some stuff at us the first game. We we weren't necessarily ready for it, and then in the second game, uh, you, you kind of think, well, what can they do? And uh, next thing you know, they're in an eight man front, and I'm like, we've never seen anything like that before. So we prepared. That's another thing with extra week. I mean, there wasn't much defensively we threw at our kids, and um, they're veteran. They've seen about everything, and it's mostly being smart football players and making the right line calls and executing from there. So. But yeah, it's two similar styles. These two teams are going to go at each other, and it's going to be line scrimmage is going to be huge. And I would say I really feel we've got an advantage there, and we're going to have to prove that we have an advantage there to be successful against them. So with the bye week, no new wrinkles out of Coach Dan Aker? Well, there's still some things in the playbook <laughs> that we can throw at you, one-time special plays and stuff. But, uh, no, we're still going to come at you and, and uh, – you know, pound away and, and try to hit you over the top at times and, and do the things that we do. And, uh, you know, we, we got a, you know, a few dings here in the bye week, which is, uh, you wouldn't think of that happen. Uh, James Schroeder's shoulders bottom him a little bit, but he's fine, ready to go. But something that we're going to, we need to be careful of as we go through this week and, and into the future to make sure he's ready to go for playoffs. And, and uh, when we played our, the pure JV, we come back pretty beat up. We had two concussions and a broken arm after that one, but, a good successful JV uh, game against a peer, but uh, so we're seeing a few more injuries. Hopefully that, that we're done with that, but uh, that's part of the game. But um, I guess we're probably in better shape than most teams as far as health right now. All right, Dan. Thanks. Congratulations on the quick start of the Winter Warriors, and good luck tonight. Thanks, Jody.